Is snow becoming a thing of the past in the UK? And just how quickly are our winters warming? We know our climate is changing. We've felt winters getting milder and wetter. But does that mean winter wonderlands are less likely nowadays? Just what does climate change mean for our coldest season? As you'd expect, we measure our weather very closely. It's what the Met Office do. And we know exactly how our winters have changed over recent decades. Now, of course, a changing climate doesn't mean things alter on a steady path. We still get big variations year to year and season to season. Cold spells still happen, but the overall climate trajectory, so when you take the average weather over many, many years, it's pretty clear. It is getting wetter and it is getting warmer over the winter months. Let's look at the temperatures first of all. With data up to the end of 2024, the most recent three years have been in the UK's top five warmest on record. That's in a series going back to 1884. Since the 1980s, the UK has been warming at a rate of 0.25 degrees Celsius per decade. And the most recent decade, so that's 2015 to 2024, has been 0.41 degrees warmer than the 1991 to 2020 average and 1.24 degrees, a degree and a quarter warmer than the 1961 to 1990 average. And when we look at winter specifically, we can see that it has warmed more than any of the other seasons when comparing to the CET, that's the Central England Temperature, the longest running instrumental temperature series in the world, which dates back to the middle of the 17th century. Winter, that's the three months of December, January and February, has increased by 2.1 degrees Celsius over that time. Now, another way of looking at temperatures in the winter is to use heating degree days or HDDs. That's a measure of uh, when there is a requirement for the heating of buildings to maintain comfortable temperatures. Using a threshold of 15.5 degrees Celsius, we can see that in the most recent decade, 2015 to 2024, uh, we've had 5% fewer heating degree days than the 1991 to 2020 average and 14% fewer than the 1961 to 1990 average. In other words, the number of days when you need to turn the heating on to keep buildings warm and the people in them happy has been reducing. Not only have the average temperatures been rising, but we've also seen the extremes of temperatures change with time too. If you look at the maximum temperatures, and when taking the winter half of the year as October to March, then four of those six calendar months have all recorded a new record maximum temperature in the past decade. And this graph shows how frosts have been reducing in the winter over the past decades. Both air frosts and ground frosts have reduced by around about a quarter since the 1980s. So it's clear our winters are getting warmer, but what about rainfall? Now, there's again going to be year on year variation. Not every winter will be wetter than the last. Many of us can remember, though, the wet winter of 2013 into 14, which saw widespread flooding and the Somerset levels seemingly swamped for week after week. Hundreds of people were evacuated. 14,000 hectares of agricultural land were underwater for close to a month. And Somerset County Council put the overall bill of that flooding at over £10 million. Now, for many years, our climate projections have been saying that our winters will get warmer and wetter. And it certainly feels like flooding is becoming more commonplace. But what do the stats say? Again, taking the figures up to the end of 2024, then if we look at the months October to March, the winter half of the year, then the most recent decade, 2015 to 2024, has been 6% wetter than the 1991 to 2020 average and 16% wetter than the average from 1961 to 1990. October 2023 to March 2024 was the wettest winter half year on record in a series going back to 1767 and six of the 10 wettest winter half years for England and Wales 
have all been in the 21st century. And so what about snowfall? Well, we all know that rain happens much more often in the UK than snow. So as a result, we have less data to go on when it comes to our frozen flaky friends. But you'd think it makes sense that if our winters are getting warmer, we'd generally be getting less snow. But then could an increase in wet weather in winter mean we see more snow? What do those ice cold numbers suggest? Well, it's pretty clear from this graph that decent dumps of snow generating 10 to 20 centimetres are becoming less of a thing across the UK when measured over the past 60 years or so. It's also clear, though, that we're getting big year-on-year -year variations. Snowy spells still happen. Remember the beast from the east in 2018, but it's just that they are becoming less frequent. And this table clearly shows a drop off in the days when snow is observed falling out of the sky when averaged over a 30 year climate period. Snow falling from the clouds over the UK is definitely reducing. When we analyze all these statistics, it's clear that we are already seeing our climate change. Our winters have become warmer and wetter with less frosts and less snow. This is all pretty much as expected. Our climate projections have been showing this for a while. So what happens next? Well, certainly in the shorter term, we'd expect a continuation of this pattern. There'll still be yearly variants. Colder winters with some snow will still happen, but overall our winters will probably continue to get a bit warmer and a bit wetter with snow continuing to get rarer. But it's too simple to say that our pathway is now set in stone and things will continue like this for many decades to come. Our atmosphere is highly complex and depends on many factors. While globally the temperatures will continue to rise, there'll always be local variations and it's just possible the UK could be part of one of those. Now you could argue that what happens next is down to a couple of streams. Firstly, the jet stream. It plays a huge part in our day-to-day -day weather and just how that fast-moving ribbon of air high in the sky changes due to our warming planet will no doubt be key to what happens in terms of rain and snowfall that we see at the surface. How the jet could change is a hot topic of scientific debate and it's far from straightforward and something we'll discuss in another video. And then there's another stream to consider, not in the sky this time, but a stream in the ocean, the Gulf Stream. This powerful current, along with its extension, the North Atlantic Drift, helps to keep the UK's climates hotter than it should be for where we sit on the planet. Now, a change in that certainly could mix up our weather patterns quite a bit. That too is for another video, and here it is. Aidan investigates the AMOC and how changes in it could dramatically affect the UK weather. Make sure you like and subscribe for daily uploads.